In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Aave to lend or borrow against your crypto assets. Now, the reason why you might want to use Aave to lend out your crypto is that you can earn a yield on that. And if you're looking to take out a loan by using your crypto as collateral, then this is a way that you can do that without having to go through any sort of approvals process. Anybody can use it and the amount that you can borrow is determined by the value of the collateral that you're willing to put forward. Of course, if you don't pay back your loan with the interest that's gonna be charged against it, then you're going to be liquidated and you're gonna lose the collateral that you put forward. Also, there is a risk that you could get liquidated if the value of your collateral goes down too much relative to the value of the loan that you took out. But before we get into those specifics, I'll briefly give you an overview of the application. So for starters, you're gonna to wanna to go to app.ave.com and connect your Web3 wallet. In this case, I'm using MetaMask, but you could use any of the other Web3 wallets out there. Now, once you've connected your wallet, Aave's platform automatically detects what assets you have, and you're gonna be able to use those crypto assets to either lend them out or to take loans. Now, if you click on this up here where it says Ethereum Market V3, you can select which chain you wanna make your transactions on. So you can do it on the Ethereum mainnet, but the transaction fees for taking out loans or for lending is gonna be higher versus if you're gonna do it on an Ethereum layer two, like base, Arbitrum, or any of the other ones down here. So I'm actually going to use Arbitrum today. So let me hit on that. And it's gonna switch over to the Arbitrum Market V3. Now, I always recommend using the latest version of the Aave Markets. Sometimes they go through and update the code for the protocol, making it more efficient. And they usually try to migrate most of the liquidity to the latest version, so it's smart to always just use the most up-to-date one that they have. Now, since I've selected the Arbitrum Market, you can see these are the assets that I have available to either lend out or to use as collateral for borrowing. So you can see, for example, here, if I wanted to supply ETH or USDC, I could do that. And that's the same as lending it out. You're supplying it to the Aave pool, who then lends it out to people that come to the application to try to take loans, and you will earn an APY or an interest rate for doing so. If you lend out ETH, then you're gonna get 1.08% which obviously is not great. If you lend out USDC, then you'll get 2.71%, which is marginally better. Now the APY is variable over time, depending on the demand for the asset and how much of it is currently in supply. But let's say that I wanted to loan out some of my USDC to the Aave protocol. Well, quite simply, if I wanted to do that, I would just hit on the supply button. I would choose how much I wanted to loan out, review the transaction details here, and I have to switch the network in my wallet from ZK Sync to Arbitrum 1. So I'll do that here. And then it's a two-step transaction to approve the coin and then to actually supply the coin. So I will do that right now and it's gonna cost me a couple of cents to do both of these transactions. So I have now supplied 10 USDC to the Aave pool. And you can see that it shows up right here under your supplies and up here at the top as well. So I can track how much I've lent out to the platform and what the net APY on that is. And this net APY figure is actually calculating the total interest rates of what I've lent and what I've borrowed. So it could be in the negative, meaning that if I make a large borrow against some of my crypto assets, then I have to pay back more than I'm earning. So now that I have 10 USDC loaned to the protocol, there's a couple things I could do. Obviously, I could just leave it there and earn that 2.71% APY over time. I could use it as collateral to take out loans against, or I could switch that asset for a different asset. Although there will be a price impact it will change the APY and there will be transaction fees for that as well. Now, let's say that I wanted to use this USDC to take out a loan for something like staked ETH. Well, I could do that because the APY or the variable rate of interest on borrowing staked ETH right now is very low. You can see actually that the interest rates for borrowing USDC is higher than the APY for lending it. And the difference in between the two is, I guess, the spread that Aave is taking. So let's say I wanted to borrow some staked ETH. Well, I could hit borrow here and I could choose how much I want to borrow. Now this maximum amount is the theoretical max that the platform would allow me to borrow. You can see it's worth about $8 and the value of the collateral that I potentially have right now is $10. So it's letting me borrow up to 80% of the value of the collateral that I just deposited. However, if you're taking out a loan, you probably don't want to borrow 
borrow up to the maximum threshold. Because in this case, let's say the price of staked ETH goes up relative to USDC, well then the value of my collateral relative to the value of the loan that I've taken will be in a greater mismatch and there's a risk of liquidation. And it would be a bit different if I had say lent ETH to the pool instead of USDC because then if the value of ETH goes down, then that is going to decrease the value of my collateral relative to whatever it is that I'm borrowing. And that's gonna impact liquidation as well. And this health factor here is indicating where the liquidation point is. So let's say that I wanted to borrow significantly less. Let's just say 0.001 state ETH. Well, I could do that and the health factor is now 4.91, whereas if it gets below 1.0, that loan would be liquidated. So this would be something that could be considered a safe loan. So let's do this for the purposes of science, even though the value of it is marginal. If I'm gonna borrow the staked ETH, I'm gonna to have to confirm this transaction in MetaMask again and pay the transaction fees. Okay, now that is done. So I've opened up a borrow. So I've lent USDC to the platform and I'm borrowing wrapped staked ETH. Now you can see in my wallet, now I have wrapped staked ETH that is available here. And I can do all kinds of things here. I can supply this back to the pool, use it as additional collateral to take out other loans. So really it's quite a complicated process and you can lever up by taking out loans, resupplying it to the pool, and then borrowing against those assets as well. But it can become quite complicated quite quickly and you wanna keep an eye on the health factor up here you can click on this risk details button and it tells you a little bit more about what is gonna happen if you reach that liquidation value. So currently the, the loan to value based on the collateral supplied I have right now is 17.5% versus a theoretical max of 81% and it liquidates at 86%. So you, you probably wanna stay below that 50% range just to be extra safe because especially in crypto markets, you never know, prices of things can be quite volatile. And you can actually set up an alert so that if your crypto loan gets below a certain health factor, it's gonna notify you automatically so that you can either come and add more collateral or pay off the position. So this is definitely a useful tool, especially if you're doing any serious borrowing or lending on this platform. But let's say theoretically that a liquidation does get triggered. Well, there's nothing that you can do unless you've added additional collateral beforehand or paid off the loan, it's going to automatically trigger and wipe out your position. So you absolutely have to be careful when using platforms like this. Now, when you're ready to repay, you can do that by just hitting on the repay button here. Now you'll see that Right now, I actually already don't have enough funds in my wallet to repay the full amount because the interest has already started streaming. And then I will still have a small borrowing position in my dashboard. So actually, if I want to repay this now, I'm going to have to go and get more staked ETH and then repay it. So I'll do that and then come right back. Okay, so now I have enough staked ETH to repay the position. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit max repay the position here. Again, eat these gas fees for the purposes of science here. And my borrow has now disappeared. And if I want to, I can withdraw my USDC from the protocol as well by hitting on the withdraw button, choosing how much I want to withdraw and then hitting withdraw USDC. So there you go, a quick and easy tutorial on how you can use Aave to borrow or lend crypto assets. You can do the same process on all of these different layer twos as well as on the Ethereum mainnet. And if you wanna take a look at the state of the Aave ecosystem, you can click on the markets tab here and you can check out what are the most supplied and borrowed assets and what the APYs are on all of these assets respectively. So good luck, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.